Uh, hey, it's a pretty good group out here, even with the people going went to growth track. So it's good to see you tonight. And um, and I uh, believe God's given me a word uh, to share with you tonight out of, uh, well, we're going to be in a few places in the, in, in the word tonight, but uh, I want to I want to speak about transition, and life is so much about transition, uh, and and so transition. If you've had any conversations with me or heard my story at all, um, or talked to myself or my wife about our a little bit of our history, you'll know that we've been through a lot of transitions. We've gone through um, uh, a lot of big transitions, and uh, I love to. I love to talk about transition. I love to uh, write about transition. And I believe God is in transition. So um, I want to share a few thoughts on that tonight. And hopefully you'll have some takeaways. There's a little sheet I handed out. Um, just left most of it blank for you just to jot down whatever uh, is highlighted for you tonight uh, from God's word. Um, let it be uh, his Holy Spirit speaking to us as we invite him. Um, let me just uh, start with prayer. Father, we do thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for uh, your powerful word, Lord, the word that goes forth into our hearts and produces a harvest, Lord. Lord, let it, let it be, uh, yeah, just take root in our lives tonight, Lord. Thank you uh, that you will accomplish your purpose as we pay attention to your word and hear what you have to say to us. Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts to respond to all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we've been digging out of the snow lately, um, up in there and up in where we are, up in Cam Camino Apple Hill area. So we're still, we still got quite a bit on the ground. Wayne just told me it was, I've been gone all day, but it wasn't warm enough to melt at all. That's for sure, huh? Still up, still quite a bit up there. Um, we had an, we had trees down and um, a tree fell down. I'm sitting in my living room a couple nights ago. Big old tree fell down. Right, fortunately, it didn't come our way. It went the way of the, of the road, and immediately I heard the tree crash, and then I heard a, uh, a vehicle slam into the tree, <laughs> so uh, they couldn't stop in time, <laughs> so they were all okay. I ran outside and, and took a look, and everybody was okay. We called the sheriff, got a report, and all that. Had two days without electricity, just came back on last night, yes, yesterday, I think it was, huh? Sunday, Sunday, came back Sunday. So uh, it's good to be in the light, but even without electricity, we are in the light, amen, because <laughs> we have the light, the light of the world. Um, so transitions, we're going to talk about transition tonight. Um, transitions are about a lot of things, and uh, some of the most important things that transition speaks about are, are, are really these, the idea of endings and uh, the in-between times and new beginnings and transitions uh, encompass all of that in our lives. And I, I want to talk about and, and just kind of think a little bit as how are we processing each of these stages, whether it's uh, endings, uh, beginnings, or in the middle, kind of in the neutral zone, somewhere in between. How are we process, processing if these things? How, most importantly, how are we allowing God to work in our lives during change? Um, it can be the most fertile ground, times of change, for God to do a deep work in our lives if we're willing and allow him to do that. And then what about choices? Transitions are a lot about choices, aren't they? We make big ch choices, little choices, big decisions, small decisions throughout transition seasons. Um, who am I making this transition about? Maybe you're in a, a transition yourself. Maybe some kind of change is going on in your life. Could be a career shift, could be a, a season that's shifting for you. Um, could be family changes, whatever. But who are we making the transition about? Transition is bigger than just me. It's bigger than just my agenda and my choice. In that, I have a choice to make, but God has a bigger plan and a bigger agenda through transition. So who am I making the transition about? Then I believe there's a lot of redemptive value in, in transition. There's a lot of good things that God wants to do. Can I trust God to bring about something good in this transition? Can I trust God enough to, al to allow him to work, to do his redemptive work through change in my life? And 
I hope as we come to the end of our time tonight, you'll say, yes, I trust you, Lord, in this season of change. I trust you more than I did when I stepped in to this place tonight because I'm grabbing hold of your word tonight. I'm grabbing hold of what you have for me tonight. So this, is a, this, is, this quote is actually from a guy. It's, the book is called The Way of Transition. I'm not sure if I put it up there. Yeah, I did. Um, and he, I don't believe it's a, a Christian author, um, but his book is great. I've read it a couple times. But listen to what he says. He says, the path leading me to meaningful work and a way to make a living from it has been a long and twisting one. What, I, what looked at the time like setbacks or defeats look to me now more like switchbacks that enabled me to gain altitude. I love that, how he turns it around. They look like setbacks, but now in hindsight, now he can look and say, those were actually, those were actually switchbacks that enabled me to gain altitude. You see the picture up there? That's a, a winding road. We had a lot of those kinds of roads in Central Asia. Switchbacks, you know, just go, because there, there are some of the highest mountains of the world in the world in that part of the world where we lived. Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, all those countries. Um, and so you've, there were times when we would journey on these roads and we would be just, you'd think, oh, we're making progress. And then another, another switchback. And it's like, oh, we just lost ground. You know, we're just, we're not getting anywhere. And that's sometimes what life can feel like. And especially when there's a lot of change in our lives, like setbacks rather than well, maybe, maybe if I look at it from another perspective, it's, it's a switchback. It's something that is helping me eventually, slowly but surely, to gain altitude. And that's what uh, God's agenda is, is like that. He's, uh, you know, we've heard again and again, you know, we've heard the, 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 the thing, uh, the saying, slow and steady wins, wins the race. Well, that, the, 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 the race, the, the, our faith is a race. And uh, sometimes we feel like we're plodding along. Other times we're going at warp speed. But sometimes we feel like we're just plodding along, gaining a little bit at a time. Then maybe a setback here and there. And yet, then when we look back, we say, oh, God, you were in that. You were part of, you were, you were orchestrating all of this to help me to be, be where I am today. So what are, what are we, how are we trusting God in those times of change when they feel hard, when they feel challenging? Genesis 12, 1, the Lord spoke to a Abram, and he said, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. You talk about transition, and you talk about change. This, this man of God, and you talk about obedience. This man of God heard the call of God on his life to go to uproot himself and his family, and go to a land that was all mapped out for him perfectly, right? It was all, the, right? Didn't God say that? No, no, no. <laughs> no, he did not. He said, go to a land, I will show you. Isn't that like the faith walk, right? Who says faith wasn't alive and well uh, over... 4,000 years ago, or however long that was. It was alive and well in the heart of Abraham, Abram, who became Abraham, the father of, the father of faith, you know? And really, um, it, he said, God said, through your offsprings, all nations on the earth will be blessed because he had such great faith to step out that way. So uncertainty, in the midst of uncertainty, he stepped out. Uncertainty is a part of transition, isn't it? We just don't know sometimes what's on the other side. And God doesn't always choose to reveal that. And so there's a lot of uncertainty and change. And with the unknown uh, can come a lot of fear and a lot of doubt, a lot of worry, second guessing. God, is this right? Is this the right path? Is this the right way? But growth is always God's agenda in times of change. Growth is always God's agenda. The path we take is not always marked very clearly and our faith can be tested and stretched we can be stretched at times during change so uncertainty mixed emotions are part of transition right sometimes we're feeling excitement sometimes loss 
sometimes grieving the, the, the what we have lost, sometimes excitement for the future. Sometimes we can just kind of go between, all, between loss and excitement and everything in between. There's a range of emotions that go along with transition. Growth is part of transition. So we have uncertainty, mixed emotions, and growth. I want to talk about four attitudes that can help guide us through life transition. Four attitudes that we can have, that we can cultivate to help guide us through life transition. And this can be applied to so much in life, whether it's um, career shifts or life, ministry changes, work, family, retirement. So th these are just some general attitudes that we can cultivate that I think um, are principles in God's word that we can, that, that can um, bolster us through times of change and strengthen us. So uh, the first one here is acceptance. Acceptance, and I mean acceptance of change, but there's more, even more to it than that. Um, Joshua chapter 1, if you want to return there, Joshua chapter 1, and this is after the death of Moses. Joshua had been his trusted assistant, sidekick, uh, just faithful and trusted assistant to Moses, and now Joshua is in the place of taking on leadership of this great nation, Israel. And it says Josh, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to, uh, up to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. In verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isn't that an awesome promise? Great encouragement from the Lord to Joshua. This, this man that is thrust into this huge transition after the death of Moses. This huge uh, responsibility to lead a nation. And you talk about transition. He was facing it. And he was to lead the people through this transition. So transitions, seasons of transition, and uh, Joshua came to a place where there was this, I'm sure there was this, this incredible, uh, why else would God give him these promises and, and seek to encourage him? Because I'm sure there's this incredible weight of feeling overwhelmed, and not to mention the grief and the loss. Um, that went, went with this, and then feeling overwhelmed by, by the transition and, and what he had to face. And, and so um, how did he accept that? I don't know exactly how he accepted it, but it seems like eventually he stepped up and he became a great leader himself. How are you doing in your transition? How are you doing with change? Are you, how are you doing in accepting it? Um, and, and working through it and allowing God to work in you through it. God gave Joshua this assurance of his presence and his help. And with that, he was able to accept this new challenge that God had given him. And God will always, when he, when he, when he commissions us to something, when he, when he gives us a new role, a responsibility, when he challenges us to step out in some new thing, God will always come alongside us with his encouragement, with his strength. He may use God's people. He may use his people to, to encourage you. He always uses his word. He always t comes along with his promises. God will, guide, God will bolster us and give us strength when we need it the most. Transitions are are, are new territory. Um, they're dang they 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 sometimes feel like dangerous territory, uh, scary territory. And Joshua grieved the 
and the Israelites, they grieved the death of Moses. And we, too, may grieve something, some kind of loss during, during a time of transition. We may grieve something or someone that we've lost. And the ending is hard, and yet it's good, and it's necessary for my growth and for your growth as a leader, as a follower of Christ. The endings that God initiates and that as we walk with him are good and necessary, although hard. And so sometimes we look at everything around us during a time of change and we, we feel like it's all hard. So God must not be in this. Well, actually, it's all hard. So probably God is in it. And uh, because he's, he, he allows us to go through these things to strengthen our faith. And he's not going to leave us in a place where we stagnate. He's going to challenge us to grow and to climb in our relationship with him. So the ending is hard and yet is good and necessary. But sometimes we do have to grieve the past. Uh, Moses, uh, Joshua and the Israelites, they took 30 days to grieve the death of Moses. And uh, then God said, get up, it's time. It's time. It's time to lead the people into the promised land. So God gives us time to grieve as well. Joshua could have said, just straight after the death of Moses, let's get up, do the next thing. It's no time to waste. But he and all the Israelites took time to grieve. They took time to mourn the loss. And, then, and that's important during transition to do that. And then God's word, by his word, he instills confidence and courage in Joshua by giving him, him his promises. See, I, you and I get to trust him in the midst of an uncertain destination. You notice how I said we have, I didn't say we have to trust him. We get to trust him during times when we have uncertainty in our lives and when the destination seems uncertain. He will show his miraculous provision and strength as we cross into the promised land. So the first step toward a healthy transition is accepting it as a process uniquely designed by God for my growth and development. Can you say that with me? My transition is uniquely designed by God for my growth and development. Do you believe that? It may be, it may be, you may not be in a transition, but believe me, there will be some change is yet to come. And if we can go into it with that mindset and with that attitude and that perspective, God can do awesome things. So let's trust God through un uncertainty. So acceptance is one attitude. Trust is another attitude that we can cultivate in transition. Trusting God through un uncertainty. Now, trust is closely tied to acceptance, but real, with, we're, with trust, we're saying, I can accept this change because I trust in God. It's based on a relationship. I can accept this transition because I know my God, and I know whom I believe it. As Paul said, what did he say? 2 Timothy 1.12. He says, that is why I am suffering as I am. You talk about someone who went through a lot of, someone who went through a lot of difficult transition. That certainly Paul did. And he says, that is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Amen. God gave Paul the confidence that he could trust him because he knew his God. And trust and knowing God, trust and relationship go hand in hand. I love this from Psalms, uh, Psalms 59. You are my strength. I watch for you. God, you are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. God will go before me and will let me gloat over those who slander me. You are my strength. I sing praise to you, you God are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely, on whom I can rely. We can rely on him as we know him and his character and who he is. We can rely on our God. He is unchanging 
and stable, even through instability of change. God is our rock. Some, I think maybe, you know, sometimes we wonder, can I trust God? I've been let down too many times before, and it scares us to trust that much. Paul, but the psalmist says, my God, my God, on whom I can rely. I love those words. They bring, bring comfort um, when, I'm in, when I'm in situations and circumstances of uncertainty. So much in life has the potential to discourage, to disappoint us, to cause disillusionment. But one thing is sure, one thing is true. God is reliable. He's worthy of our trust. Amen? God is completely 100% reliable. I can depend on him through the chaos and the clutter of life because my life is hid with Christ in God. Our life is hid with Christ in God. We have in him a fortress. And that's what the psalmist said. Even this, that side of the cross, the psalmist was saying, he is my fortress. The New Testament equivalent to that is my life is hid with Christ in God. My life is hid in Christ with him. So, I love these words from Oswald Chambers. I don't think I put it on the screen, but listen to this, to what he says. Oswald Chambers says, I can trust him because he determines my destiny as I walk with him. A saint's life is in the hands of God like a bow and arrow in the hands of an archer. Think of a, an archer with his bow and arrow. That's like our lives are in the hands of God. God is aiming at something the saint cannot see, and he stretches and strains. And every now and again, the saint says, I cannot stand it anymore. And God does not heed. He goes on stretching till his purpose is in sight. Then he lets it fly. He lets that arrow fly. He stretches us, and he lets it fly. Trust yourself in God's hands. Trust yourself in God's hands. He's precise and accurate with that arrow he is shooting out, which is you and me. He knows, where, he knows our trajectory, where, where he wants us to go. He also, another one, I have, to, I have to quote this one as well, Os, Oswald Chambers again. To be certain of God means that we are uncertain in all our, all our ways. How does that that doesn't seem right. Think of it. To be certain of God means that we are uncertain in all our ways. We do not know what a day may bring forth. This is generally said with a sigh of sadness. It should be rather an expression of breathless expectation. We are uncertain of the next step, but we are certain of God. Immediately, we abandon to God and do the duty that lies nearest. He packs our life with surprises all the time. So he's not asking us to look ahead and see all the steps ahead. He's just do what, do what comes next. Do what the, he shines a lot, enough light on our path to say, this is, this is what I'd have you to do now at this, at this time. And that's enough. Do the duty that lies near us and, and let the adventure unfold. And I think that's, that's a way to, to approach transition as well. To be certain of God means to trust him because we have a relationship with him, not because we know everything about him and his plan. Right? None of us have all the answers. None of us know everything about God and his plan. But to be certain of him means to trust him because we know him. As Paul said, I know whom I believed. A third attitude for, for uh, cult. For, for transition, a third ad attitude to cultivate would be gratitude. Gratitude for what God has done, for who he is um, in our lives. Thankfulness, and I learned this through some major transitions um, that I've been through, but thankfulness is one heart attitude that transition loves to mess with. Yeah? Have you noticed that? When, when we're in the chaos of transition, thankfulness can kind of just go out the window because we start focusing on what? The next thing, we look too far ahead, we're not resting in God at the present, in the now. 
we're looking back with with uh, with uh, regret, maybe uh, different emotions. So we don't have gratitude in the present. Gratitude and thankfulness is such an attitude. It's such a powerful attitude to cultivate during transition times. Complaining is is the usually the default. I know with me, it's like, oh, you know, why? You know, so so start asking questions and you know, who or what, where, why. But usually the who gets left out and the who is all about what God's plan and agenda and what he wants me to learn in that. And so uh, I, I think it's time to t- step back during transition and say, okay, but God, all of this is going on around me. All of these changes are taking place. Lots of instability, lots of uh, unknown, but God, I love the word, but God, <laughs> but God is stable, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So taking time to remember and reflect, it draws out a spirit of gratitude, and that changes our attitude toward change as well as we approach change in our lives. Deuteronomy chapter 8. So what God says to, to the Israelites. He says, God, knew, God knows how we can lose gratefulness, how we can forfeit an attitude of gratitude during times of, of abundance and comfort. And so we're often challenged when there is a lack, when there is not enough, it seems, to, to, to not be grateful. And, that, and, and those are times when God wants to remind us, listen to this, Deuteronomy 8, verse 10, when you have eaten and are satisfied, Praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you today. Be careful that you do not forget. Be careful that you do not forget. Remember his blessings. Remember his promises. Take time when things are good and when things maybe aren't so good. Take time to reflect and thank God. Have an ad, cultivate that gratitude. I like, I thought of the, the 10 lepers who came to Jesus and we know they got healed and how many came back to thank Jesus? One returned, right? One returned to thank him and to express gratitude. Um, the rest of them just, they went their way, they were cleansed and, uh, but this one, he came back praising God. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan, the word of God says. And Jesus said, where, only one came, where are the other nine? Luke 17. There's this, uh, there's this tendency to forget God, even when positive change takes place. These, these ha- th- this wasn't negative change, this was positive change. This was a healing they were cleansed, and immediately they go away and forget God. And so whether it's pause times of, of, of abundance, times of blessing, or times when we feel like we're in the desert, cultivating gratitude is so critical to um, not just surviving but thriving during change. So there's positive and negative change. Let me encourage you to be the one to return to Jesus with thanksgiving at the end of the day. Return to him at the end of the day with thanksgiving. Whether your change feels positive or negative, you'll be glad that you did. You'll be glad that you did when you lay your head on your pillow at night. Return to Jesus with gratitude. Fourth and finally, um, value relationships. This goes along with transition because transition tends to uproot relationships in different ways. For us, it's uprooted a lot of relationships, uh, moving from culture to culture and place to place. We have a, a, a thing on our um, poster that my wife created on our wall 
with all of the addresses that we have lived in since we've been, no, before we even got married, huh? In our growing up years and then being, huh? Since we were born, yeah. Lots of addresses. Not so many when we were little growing up. Most of them have been our married years when we've changed so many places. How many are there? I don't even know. <laughs> it's quite a few. 20 something? Yeah. So a lot of changes. Maybe you've moved a lot as well. But there's, there's, a, there's a tendency through change to kind of, uh, uh, when you go through so many changes, I know that I've dealt with this, is to kind of allow, kind of let my heart get a little bit hardened toward, you know, it's because I'm not, I'm not, um, it's just another change. And uh, maybe I shouldn't get so attached or build too many relationships because I'll move to the next place and that'll just be more painful anyway. So, you know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of dealing with um, that when you have a lot of change. Yet value, and I can still value those relationships even though maybe some of them are from a season past that I really don't have the benefit of that relationship anymore. And yet there is a benefit from that time that I have gr I've grown from, I've been encouraged from, I've become who I am because of that person who mentored me, that person who I was my colleague and worked, I worked with for so many years, that person who spoke into my life, whatever. To value relationships during transition is, uh, is a great way to stay positive and to um, keep the important things important, right? Because relationships really are what it comes down to, um, both in whether it's in our home or in our workplace, in our families. Um, I love the story of, 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 uh, of Ruth and Naomi. Incredible story. It just it just tugs at your heart. This story of um, of Naomi and her two daughter in laws, um, and it was a time of famine in uh, Israel. So, her and her husband Naomi and Elimelech, her husband, uh, and their two sons, they they go to um, to live in Moab, the region of Moab, to escape the famine, and. Um, while they were there, um, their boys, um, their two boys married um, daughters, uh, they were Moabite women, so um, they, they had two daughter-in-laws, and then Naomi's husband died, and then her two sons died, and so she's left with her two daughter-in-laws, and eventually the famine, uh, the famine in the land subsides, and she wants to return to her homeland. And as she sets off, she, at, she tells her, um, you can go in the, in the book of Ruth, it's in the book of Ruth, um, but she, as she, in a chapter one, um, it's where, most, where what I'm talking about is found, chapter one. And, and she says, why, uh, this is verse, um, so she's returning She's going back to her homeland, and she says to her two daughter-in-laws, verse 11, Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? I'm, I'm, am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight that gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? <laughs> Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. So she's feeling this weight of loss, right? Huge loss. Yet these two daughter-in-laws are loyal, and one of them is particularly loyal, and um, it is Ruth. And eventually Orpah, the other daughter-in-law, kissed her mother-in-law good goodbye and went and and went off to her homeland. But Ruth, it says, clung to her Naomi. She clung to her, Ruth, uh, in chapter 1, verse 14. Ruth made a choice to stay with her mother-in-law. It was going to a foreign land. She could have stayed with her family, um, had a better chance of probably, you know, without God in the picture, <laughs> maybe not, but by, all, by, what she, by what was in the natural, had a better chance of remarrying and... and and 
having her own life there, but she decided to stay with her, her mother-in-law and go to is back to Israel. Ruth made a choice based on her relationship. And sometimes we may, don't always make choices based on what we, what we should be valuing the most, and that is the relationship piece, right? Sometimes we're making choices because of a personal agenda or something. But she let that go, and she made her choice based on her relationship to her mother-in-law and her somehow she felt a connection to God's family, to God's community. And um, going on from there, verse 16, Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death death separates you and me. When given the choice to stay or go, Ruth clung to Naomi and her newfound roots in the community of God's people. And, and, and at the same time, she transitions to this new location, to a foreign land. See, that's rootedness and upheaval struggling together, right? On one side, it's about, but what, what was she rooted in? She was rooted in the relationships. That's what, that's what gave her that sense of identity and purpose. And so transition is like that. We have to choose. We have a choice to make. What are we going to be rooted in? What are we going to root ourselves in? And then what, when it comes to upheaval, how are we going to deal with that? And we're going to have, be able to deal a lot much better with the upheaval when we trust in God and trust in his plan and value, number one, our relationship with God, then also the relationship we have with, with God's people. That's why it's important um, to be part of, of God's family, to, to be plugged into to a, a worshiping body, because it's when we, that's, that's part of our being rooted. It's part of being rooted. This can be a great combination, rootedness and upheaval. Doesn't sound so great, the upheaval part, but it is. It's holding on to those key relationships that help us stay grounded while other areas in our lives shift and change, right? So my bet is that Ruth fared a lot better than her sister-in-law, Orpah, because Orpah failed to value the relationship. She said goodbye to everything, um, in terms of the relationship piece, but Ruth opted for leaving a place but staying connected to the people that she loved. It was the commitment to that relationship with, which led her to inherit the blessing. Huh? She, she now, yeah, if you look at the, the line of, uh, through which Jesus the Messiah came, it was through Ruth as part of that lineage. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. When the transition becomes only about me, however, I'm sure to miss out on greater purposes, God's greater purposes in my life. So I want to encourage you, don't miss out on the blessings that God has for you in transition and change. And on the other side of it, value those relationships. Value that those things that can keep you rooted. So, let me encourage you tonight with that, and, and let me ask you tonight, what steps might you take today? I don't know, maybe you scribbled a thought or two down, but what step might you, ta might you take? What steps might God have you take um, in this transition or in a time of change? Maybe an impending transition that you see ahead, maybe something that you're still kind of working through from the past, or maybe something you're in right now. Would anybody be brave enough to just share what, what step, one step God wants you to take tonight through this through change that you haven't really thought of or that you're reminded of tonight? One step, just, just shout it out. Trust, Trust. amen. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gratitude, amen. Amen. What else? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
drawing closer to him. Yeah, relationship. Good. Good. Be willing to move and act. Yeah, and that's not always easy, but uh, yeah, God can give us. God gives us the strength to do that. Step out. Amen. Say it again. Hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Maintaining those, keeping those relationships going, thriving. Yeah. Good. Some good. Yeah, acceptance, that's a big one, yeah. And, and that's, I like what you tacked on to the end there, because God is with you, Rick, and God is with each one of us tonight. And so we can accept the transition that he's challenging us to go through, that he's leading us into. Even with this church, isn't it exciting, the transition that's ha- happening, the transformation that we're going to see? Uh, it's all not always easy. There's a lot of, uh, I just was texting back with one of our core leaders today about something I missed in the transition, and it caused us to double book something. And so with all the transition, sometimes, you know, you get, you get confused and mixed up, but that's okay. God is with us. And we're going to see great things ahead. So uh, I'm excited for where God has us. And uh, he's, uh, it was a year of exodus. Pastor shared that many times during the last year. We're in a season of transition now. And uh, um, we're, we're, we're getting that much closer to uh, the good things God has for us. The promised land. Amen.